just but understanding that biology is very much uh, uh, very complex, very interactive, and it needs to be cycled. So I like to cycle my supplements, even the great ones, you know, like NAD or uh, quercetin or fisetin. I typically do them in cycles of on and off. And why am I doing that? I'm trying to build and then clear out. So again, looking at that, so, you know, AMP kinase pathway and the mTOR pathway, which are two pathways that the body can sort of switch between. One's in the sort of growth, repair, build muscle, build here, build. And the other is clear out the garbage. Uh, and you don't want to have the growth turned on all the time. So, for example, uh, bodybuilders want to have mTOR going all the time, full bore, but that's actually shortening their lifespan. Okay, so they may have great, huge muscles, but a lot of their blood markers and things are showing can show if they don't understand this that having that turned on all the time, that M mTOR, that growth, can actually shorten your lifespan. Um, can you explain a little bit more about mTOR and AMP kinase? Yeah, absolutely, Lisa. So mTOR is almost like the master switch in terms of how, in terms of aging, right? So, and it's if you uh, activate it, exactly what you said, it goes into tissue building mode, and so we build muscle, we accumulate tissue, um, but it's not good for us to stay in that mode all the time. Same, exactly what you said. So, you, um, if we fast a little bit, then we inhibit it, and it's. Uh, one thing to also recognize is that, like, uh, you know, it's, it's good to have, like, you know, two or three meals a day, but definitely don't snack between meals because even just having you know, three meals a day gives your mTOR a, a time to turn, turn off. And that is just uh, shown to be so good for you. Yeah. Um, calorie restriction is so far the only uh, intervention that we can make that actually guarantees us to extend our health span. And uh, and it turns out mTOR is like a calorie restriction mimetic, right? It copies it. It makes the body think that it's in calorie restriction mode. And when so when mTOR is turned off, it triggers those autophagy signals and a whole bunch of, uh, I guess, uh, biochemical pathways and cascades which uh, um, help the body uh, spend more time longer, uh, more spend, help the body uh, clear out yeah, and and live longer essentially. Um, so, and, and AMPK is actually just a sensor for how much energy we've got going on in our cells right now. And it, it feeds back up into, um, into mTOR. And so activating AMPK, um, which is, is what happens when we have less ATP in our cells, the energy, um, yeah, it, it, it pretty much does a very similar part, pathway to uh, what we're talking about with the mTOR. Um, rapamycin is a inhibitor and in every single organism that it's been tested in, it, it slows aging or extends life. Mm. So we're talking in hookworms, mice, rats, dogs, primates, and there are a lot of humans that are doing it right. I'm taking it right now, just like your mum, um, yeah. for exactly that reason. And so the research will come out in the not too distant future. And it'll be really just what they're working out now is the protocols. Do we take yeah. it for a short That's amount such. of time in the middle of our life? Do we take it towards the end of our life? What's the best and what's going to help us extend our life the most, but it is an extremely exciting molecule and yes. uh, will, will be the first one off, off the, uh, the first cap off the rank, I think, in terms of uh, life extension. And then what's exciting is you start to then add in those senolytics we're talking about and giving those a boost and cycling them. Um, in, my, in mice models uh, with the senolytics, you see a 10% life extension. Wow. So these incrementally are going to essentially mean that we stay a lot healthier for a lot longer. And it fundamentally at the top level, why this is so interesting is that all these diseases we experience with old age, Alzheimer's, cardiovascular disease, cancer, the researchers are starting to think these are actually syndrome. This is a syndrome of aging. So, and, and you know, we've spent hundreds of billions of dollars trying to fix them. We've made progress, but it's not there. We haven't cured it. So actually let's get in front of it. Let's actually keep our cells as young as possible for as long as possible and just push those diseases out 10, 20, 30 years. And that's fundamentally what we're, we, we, you know, where the research is going. 
Yeah, and this is just super exciting because, you know, that's exactly what we want to do. Now, some of the molecules and some of the products that you've got in your SRW range, and you, you, you have the privilege of working with some of the world's top scientists in the development of your products, and these are formulations that are dealing with various aspects of what people could be dealing with, whether it's uh, immunity or muscle tone. You've got a new one come out, come out I see. Um or if it's uh, senescent cells or, you know, NAD um, precursors combined with other things. How do you, like, what, what fascinates me with your company is that you've gone to the scientists who have been studying in this particular area for decades often, and they have the clinical research and then taking all that research, their backing and developing products that have actually got the best combination and formulations of 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 these molecules the best that we have right now and that will you know change and grow over time um how's that process been because i know like you know you've done a number of different companies as you said in your life and um always been an entrepreneur how has that 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 process of working with these amazing scientists been for you in the development of some of these products I think these these uh, scientists are very you know mission driven people. Like they just you know they're doing their work because they want to advance and help people and, and advance advance the science, but also ultimately what they're doing it is to have an impact on on people and and on health. So it's been a a, a privilege to work with with these guys and girls out there in, in the in the research world. And what we've we, we've come up with essentially is a is a is a a program of three products which address the hallmarks as they hit, if you will. So, you know, we put sunscreen on our faces from the age dot because we're looking after our DNA. So the first product we have is really about how do we care and nurture and support the, the normal functions associated with looking after our DNA inside our cells. And, and that's something you might take from your 20s, for example. And then the, the next thing to kind of fall over is the, these mitochondria, right? These batteries in our cells. And so, um, but you don't need to take anything for them because they're, they're pretty good until your 30s and 40s. And then they decline about 10% a decade thereafter. So it's mm. a, so what we want to do there is go, okay, um, let's, how do we support the cell with these mitochondria and boost the energy? And energy is really important because in our cells use it to do their main thing. So it's thinking or it's heart beating or it's um, you know, processing junk, if you will, through livers and kidneys. Um, but when you get to a point where you're perhaps in your 50s if, if you consider your body's like a v8 engine you might have lost two cylinders and so the car's actually not performing as well but it's also you know, our cells have to make a decision do i take the rubbish out do i fix a couple of proteins what because you know, everything is energetically expensive and it's got to it sort of makes a decision to say well i've got to sort of divert most of my energy towards heart beating and so it compromises our cells because the junk you know, fills up in the in the in the kitchen, so to speak. It starts yeah. to get smelly and what have you, or the, the 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 housekeeping hasn't been done. So we need that energy, and uh, and so that's really what the second product is about is is supporting energy, and we do that by a really remarkable molecule called astaxanthin. Yep, you'll be familiar with it. It's a an antioxidant that comes from algae. Algae are exposed. It's their sunscreen essentially. Like they, wow. uh, and it, it prevents the UV damage. Of, of the the membrane inside the algae it's a really interesting molecule because it actually fits perfectly inside our membranes and it's an antioxidant so it just helps keep those membranes working really well and it so it looks after your cell membrane your nuclear membrane and then most importantly the mitochondrial membrane oh, wow. and just looks after it and, and that might that membrane is just so metabolically important to us um, and then we mix a little of uh, the nad precursor um, NAD is kind of like fuel for your mitochondria. Um, NAD is involved in 300 different processes in your cell, but um, one of the key roles it has is in the mitochondria is it, to help generate energy. So we're sort of looking after the membrane and putting good good um, substrate for the energy generation. And then we, um, we've also got a, a molecule on there called terastilbene, which is closely related to resveratrol. And that's um, that kind of activates your sirtuin genes, and and with plenty of NAD in the mix, that also very much looks after your mitochondria, but also your core DNA. And then lastly, it's about um, that housekeeping, right? This is the, the sort of the final um, thing to fail in our bodies, 
And, and so that really doesn't hit until our 50s. And so you take the third product to support um, uh, the inhibition of mTOR. So that's about helping your cells last a little bit longer and stimulating autophagy. Um, we've got a really interesting molecule which comes from olive oil in the mix. Mm, and that's really pain, helpful yeah. for um, really helpful for that proteostasis, like looking after that, those proteins and when they're not working, helping them to recycle there. So, um, so that's so you know that actually covers the nine hallmarks, but it's not just about pills. You can't um, supplement out a bad lifestyle and a bad mm. diet. So, number one is like, like let's get things working properly from a lifestyle and diet perspective, and then we add these things in to to enhance them. Yeah, and and, and you know, like I had an argument with someone the other day. They said a very fit gentleman. He's you know in his late sixties, still kite surfing, crazy. But we don't need supplements. And I was like, yeah, that's a big blanket statement. <laughs> um, and I think there's a bit more nuance to that conversation. Our food supplies are not what our grandparents had. We, If we had the, you know, perfect organic uh, food supplies and um, everything was how it should be without the chemicals. And we're also swimming in a super chemicals every single day mm. from the table that I'm sitting at here to the wallpapers, to the, to the exhaust fumes, to the you know mm. products we use every day um and therefore we need to support the body more with the the detox and the ability to get rid of you know xenoestrogens and endocrine disruptors that are in our daily environment you, you agree with that 100 percent. And, and i think you know um your uh, friend's um theory is is kind of made made sense but it doesn't make sense now because we we know that there are uh, elements of ourselves that degrade over time, and we know how to um, I guess, um, reverse some of that decline. So the, you know, coming back to NAD, we know that that molecule declines in our bodies from our 40s and drops off precipitously. Um, but if we top it back up, it has quite significant health benefits for our cells and overall, overall body. So it's like, you know, we've got new knowledge now and we need to look at how we integrate that new knowledge into what we're doing. And, and they, just like the cars back in the 30s, you know, they, they, they broke down, they had wooden pistons that, you know, we've, we've, we've figured stuff out and we're getting better at it. And so this is where this new technology comes in. And, and one of my favorite molecules on the planet right now is something called hobamine. And yes, yeah, so hobamine, you introduced me to that and I've never yeah. come across it before. Yeah, it's uh, so we um, we have oxidative stress in our cells, and that's pretty much if you think about how we get oxidative stress, it's like in, coming back to the car again. You put gas and oxygen, and it gets burned in the car, provides energy. Out the back goes the exhaust, um, and we some cars have catalytic converters which scrub the exhaust to make it a wee bit cleaner before it goes out. So if we go to the little engine in our, our cells, our mitochondria, it burns sugar from the food we eat and air from the air we breathe and creates ATP energy. But the exhaust is the free radicals. And, and we our mitochondria are just literally, they're re responsible for 95% of the free radical generation in our cells. So they're literally lined with antioxidants. Um, but as we age, those they decline and our mitochondria to fix how they work, but also they spill free radicals out into our cells and it creates oxidative stress. Um, but and and so up until recently, it's just been antioxidants which have solved that problem, um, mm. and you know to some extent. But actually, it's well, something to know, and not many, many people will know this, is that free radicals are good for us as well. Yes, this just is the Goldilocks zone we're talking about, right? Yeah. So you know the body uses free radicals to communicate so around really. cells and around the up and also it shoots free radicals at, at, at pathogens if our immune system does that as the first line of defense so actually too many antioxidants is not so good for us right so uh homamine is the first time that we can actually start to look at how do we protect the body from the downstream effects of oxidative stress so if you imagine a, a, a reactive molecule it's um, a free radical um, it, what it wants to do is it wants to get stable. So it grabs a molecule from another molecule and it becomes happy and stable. But in the process, it damages other molecules. Yeah. And if it happens that it's a bit of protein, oh, sorry, a bit of a lipid in your membrane. Um, actually, that lipid becomes radicalized. So it, it becomes reactive. 
And then it goes and it's, it reacts really quickly with your DNA and your proteins and it causes a problem. So hovamine is a circuit breaker. That means that we can protect the body from the downstream effect of oxidative stress without interfering wow. with the healthy free radical signaling. So it's a breakthrough and there's just so much research coming through now that it's a, a molecule of significant effect and um, for, for health. And, and so it, it's working on that membrane level. So it's mm. breaking it there from the oxidative stress, getting out beyond that membrane. And exactly, it's just it's it's preventing it, it reacts with that membrane before the membrane gets to react with anything else. Wow! And, and that bit of membrane would love to react with some DNA or some protein, and it literally forms a, a, a clump. On, yeah. So it's it's part of the reason we sort of, the other reason that we get increased inflammation as we age as well because the immune system doesn't like these particular molecules. And so it tries to get rid of them, but it's 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 quite difficult. So there's a lot of science in what I just said just there. But yeah. basically, the long, the the, the sort of the, the short term is that it defends our cells from oxidative stress without interfering with healthy free radical signaling, which is wow. which is a real breakthrough. Because uh, yeah, I, I've been very confused in this space with antioxidants. You know, and the side of the scientists, you know, to be fair, where you know I don't know, was it a decade or fifteen years ago or whenever where they thought. Oh, oxidative damage is causing the damage to the, you know, the DNA and, the, you know, the oxidative stress. So therefore, let's just throw antioxidants at things and then we'll be good to go, you know. And then they found, hmm, hang on, this isn't working. You know, hmm. antioxidants are certainly important. And, you know, for example, when I've just had COVID, I've upped my antioxidant game, right? Because Absolutely. I'm dealing with more oxidative stress. I know that. So I need to quench that a little bit more. But for example, if I go and exercise and then I take a big bottle of vitamin C, I've actually hindered the adaptation that my body would have made through that exercise because I've just thrown a whole lot of antioxidants at that time. Now, that's not to say vitamin C is bad. It's just to say, the exercise is actually a hermetic stress. It's actually tearing down muscle, you know, and the body's going, whoop, we better actually send more troops there. And that's the signaling part. If I go and throw an antioxidant into the mix at that point of time, I've just stopped that signaling and, and stopped that adaptation. So I'm, you know, decreasing my ability to build the muscle or get more endurance or whatever the case may be. Um, so it's a time and a place for your antioxidants and, and there's a time and a place for hermetic stresses. Uh, but this one is, is different in that sense that it's not stopping that signaling from happening, but it is stopping, especially those membranes by the sounds of it, interacting and damaging DNA and causing these clumps. That's, that, I, I didn't understand that. So that's really quite exciting. Um, and this is the only molecule that I've come across that does this. Because yeah, I've never heard of that concept before. Yeah, it's, uh, it comes from Himalayan tartary buckwheat. So it's been mm -hmm. in our diet for Me? thousands of years, uh, especially yep. in the Himalayas. Um, and it's a small molecule. So it means it gets to every cell in your body, which is really exciting. Um, but And it's really comes from, again, it's like these breakthroughs, understanding what those, you know, what the oxidative process is and looking at the chain of things that are occurring and going, Okay, how now that we know what's going on here, what can we do to to resolve it? And they tested so many molecules, and and essentially found this 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 molecule called hovamine, um, and it's been researched now for uh, say fifteen years. Um, wow. We're just hearing about it because there's a lot of work to be done to make sure that it's it's safe and it's 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 okay to take, and and that, that is the case. And there are tens of millions of dollars of research now going into it for brain health for uh, cardiovascular health and also for immune health but essentially it's a uh, it's it's a, just an everybody molecule it's one of these ones that um, everybody should be taking and that's in one of your products um which is and in, in, i think that one is combined is that one combined with rutin and astralagoside yeah that's right so it's in cell one but we've also um got it as a, a single ingredient product as well so right um and um, and yeah, I just couldn't recommend people take that um, highly enough, yep. and to take it from as early as possible as well, because these comp these these little um, like these clumps, if you will, they are quite hard for the body to break down and get rid of, and they accumulate as we age. So this I, I like to call it sunscreen for your cells, and I know it's not sunscreen so to speak, but it's actually uh, helping protect. It's protective, yeah. Wow, that's exciting. I've got mum on that one. <laughs> so we'll see um how how that that that, that works 
for her. Um, Greg, where do you see the science going in the next five to 10 years? What are you most excited about? What are you working on right now? And um, the second part to that question, you know, what things are you doing at Science Research Wellness that you're really excited about? personally yeah look I, I think we, we we're looking um at 2050 and going how how do we stop that problem from a, occurring in terms of just you know being in the same model and having two billion people on the planet being pretty unhealthy and hanging around and costing a lot of money so really um, our focus is on preventative wellness like how do we help people navigate this so that they turn up in their 50s 60s and 70s and thriving and in really good health and, and, and body, with bodies in good shape so that's what our focus is on. And, and you know, we're continuing to work with um, experts around the world on how do we do that and how do we translate that in a way which is accessible to people. You know, um, there's a lot of pharmaceutical companies working on this right now. Uh, I'd say that they'll have drugs and, and formulations out that are, um, you know, probably a decade away. Um, but we, when we understand what's happening at the cellular level, we can go and have a look at all the different supplements out there and go, okay, what are actually interacting with these pathways and how can we uh, formulate that in a way which can um, you know, essentially have a positive impact on, on those processes. So that's, you know, we've got uh, our cell one, two, and three out as we speak. They will evolve and change over time as we better understand exactly what's going on. And um, what I'm most excited about is, is this reprogramming that we talked about right at the start. Like if we can reprogram our cells and our DNA and the little methylation patterns, we can reset the clock. Um, that it's, it's happening now. Like they recently they had a lady who was 53 and they, they uh, applied some factors to her skin and, and got it acting like someone 30 years younger, right? I want that. Yeah, don't we all <laughs> right? <laughs> um, in mouse models, they've managed to reprogram um, the blood, um, liver, kidney, and spleen. So, you know, these are just baby steps, um, but they are ultimately going to culminate in um, us being able to you know, reprogram. Um, and I think most excitingly is just the fact um, that we need to be doing that for our brain, right? So yeah. um, right now the tech's coming down the line that we can grow our own organs or that we can um, 3D print them, for example. But I don't. I think we're a long way about away from solving that for your brain, right? So I'm yeah. sure that we can get kidneys <laughs> sorted and hearts and what have you. But so really we want to be looking after our brain as best we can so that you know we you know so that when we turn up in this technology is there that we've got something that's working really well and we can patch up what we what is not working so well so um, you know i think brain uh, health will will definitely be a focus as yeah we, and and you know as having worked with lots of people with brain injuries and having worked on a daily basis with mum with brain injuries and neurodegeneration and you know strokes and aneurysm the results of those um people with with uh tbis and concussions and stuff protecting your brain i mean you can have the best looking body but if your brain is not doing what it's meant to be doing um you know you're not going to be functioning you're not going to be enjoying life you're not going to have it's just a hell of a battle it's a hell of a battle like for me with mum and having had you know having it had a stroke plus tumors plus everything possible in her brain and and doing hyperbaric and doing supplements and doing a very strict diet and doing the exercises but I have to keep her there every single day like yesterday I was away for four hours with work um by the time I got home the swelling had started in her feet the connection from her brain to her body wasn't there so I had to spend the next couple of hours sort of working with her to reconnect her brain to her body and I have to do that every day you know ongoing throughout the day uh that's a hell of a load I'll mm. tell you that's a hell of a load that could have been prevented if we had if I had known her risk factors her genetics if I had known the diet mistakes that she was doing if I'd known a lot of those things when you know in hindsight it's brilliant it's very nasty like that <clears throat> but that makes me passionate to be able to stop other people having things like strokes and and things or neurodegeneration or Alzheimer's or dementia these are very we 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 can see them coming 10 years ahead we can do things about them when they're already started um and it's never too late to start there was a, pa a page in your book that I uh loved um, talking about an 83-year-old lady, Ernestine 
shepherd. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's a she was a, a bodybuilding champ at the age of seventy nine or something, or, um, and still absolutely gorgeous and amazing at eighty three. Um, and she didn't start till she was fifty six, and she was you know by her own admittance was extremely fit and unfit at fifty six, and then started to remodel and reshape her body and, and her diet and all the rest of it um, over time. And now at eighty three, honestly, looks like a supermodel, just absolutely amazing and muscular and athletic. And I'm like, damn, that's where I, <laughs> that's what I want to look like at eighty three. Um, and that, that starts now. You know, but she started at 56 years old. Imagine if she'd started at 20. And mm. maybe she's got some fabulous genetics. We don't know. Um, maybe not. Um, but those daily incremental things that you do, like well, Greg can give you the best supplements, and I can give you the best diet. But if you're lying in bed or lying on the couch and doing no exercise, you are going to turn to soup. Yep, exercise is the basis. The exercise and diet and mindset, the mindfulness, that's probably the one I struggle with the most, <laughs> the stress reduction. If you looked at my oxidative stress, it probably comes all from the actual psychological and physical stresses. Um, and that's something that it is, is, is epidemic as well. And that has a very powerful effect as well. So working on each of these pillars, and for me, it's, you know, trying to get the stress levels down is probably the most important for another one. It might be getting off the couch and getting moving and someone else it might be the diet or or whatever. But all of these things add up to an extra 20, 30, and maybe even 50, 60 years if we're lucky by the time, you know, that yeah. technology rolls around. Yeah, I mean, we are modern humans, but we're still in ancient bodies. Right? Yeah. We're just so, um, you know, we, we need to move and we need to... Um, constantly you know, you know, stress our bodies, not in a bad way, but just in terms of you know that, that hormetic Hormetic, response you're yeah. talking about. Um, and you, know, you go to the blue zones, which I'm sure you've talked about a bunch. And these are people in there, you know, over a hundred who are thriving. They're still working. They they walk everywhere. They move move in their life. They've um, they still enjoy a cigarette, unbelievably, <laughs> and, and, and wines. And so. Um, but you, and this is why, like, a really, you can't, you know, a really good uh, diet and exercise and lifestyle actually covers a myriad of of, of sins. Um, obviously, don't recommend smoking, but, no. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, and these guys perhaps enjoy a glass of wine once a night as well. So it's it's a it's just a super fascinating study on what we can do, and fundamentally, it's diet, it's exercise. The diet's plant based, Mediterranean based. Um, they and 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 so strong social groups as well. Like these, the other part. It is, I think, um, you know, a good a good partner and a good so, set of friends can add eight years to your life. Like so, these are, fun, you know, we're social animals and and um, and also looking at how you attack life. Right, attacking it positively actually has a really positive impact. So it's about like, okay, how do we adopt our mindset so that we're really positively attacking aging? So. Do all of those things, um, and you're you're in a really good shape. Yeah, you got a good chance at living to 120, and you know, and getting there in, in good shape rather than being decrepit and declining, which none of us want. You know, that's yeah. that's you and my goal is, is I think to <laughs> make sure that that doesn't happen to us personally or to our loved ones. You know, and, and the other keep thing, at bay. Another thing that's happening in the states, there's a company called Fountain Life. Are you familiar with what they're doing? I a little bit, little bit. Yeah, so they um, they actually upload you essentially in terms of doing a full scan and get about 150 gigabytes of data. Like it's just crazy. Um, but what they do is they pick up um, uh, around 14% of people have some sort of actionable um, health issue that might be going to be coming to bite them in the backside in the next five to 10 years. And so yeah. that might be 2% of people have an aneurysm or 2% have a, a cancer of some description. And so that just enables you to just get so far in front of it. You know, imagine dealing with cancer at stage zero. Oh, that's that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so not don't, a problem there. So, so do all of the good stuff, but don't put your head in the sta- sand, go and get your tests, go and get checked. Um, and what Fountain Life are doing right now is not particularly accessible. It's about a hundred thousand dollars a year, but they're saying that it'll be 10,000 a year in five years and a thousand dollars a year in 10. So, you know, that's going to mean that we'll all be able to roll in and do that that checkup and correct issues before they become a problem. 
and um, it's going to be just revolutionary for us all because it's just right now you feel like you're in a wee bit of a lottery at times like yeah. some people do make it some people don't and um and that that lottery is going to shift to just just good management and then and we'll we'll all get the opportunity to have like long healthy uh, thriving lives yeah and you know a lot of people say well it's only for the rich you know and, and it is and, and a lot of these things are start off being very expensive even like the supplements that we 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 get um they cost but over time as the research is being paid for and it becomes a per unit cost cheaper that's going to make it accessible it always starts if you think about the original cell phones 20 30 whatever years ago it was now when we first had the, those big bricks you know it was only millionaires that could have them uh, now of course you know every kid in, in the all all around the world has got a cell phone um and it's it's, it's become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and more accessible and more accessible and it is unfortunately the way the world works and it is what what needs to happen is the research and the research is very expensive um, but it does then eventually get cheaper and get more accessible yeah absolutely I think that's um something I learned um you know probably 20 years ago in terms of um you know the things start out being expensive um and, but yeah it seems like a long time to wait but 20 years is not that long and all of a sudden it becomes really accessible and and, and for all of us so it's a sometimes a bit of a, a wait and see but this is the reason that we want to actually proactively use all the knowledge we can to stay well right now so that when we um, when these technologies come along that um, we're ready and we can afford them and our bodies are in good shape absolutely that's a good place to end it greg you've been absolutely fabulous today i want to thank you i'd love to have you on again and we can do a deeper dive into some of the other nine hallmarks of aging because there's a lot to discuss um where can people find you and reach out to you or your team at sw i mean we've got your products now in in my shop on lisatamady.com if you want to head over there um but what you know highly recommend people go and get the harnessing the nine hallmarks of aging so we'll put that link in there but where else can they reach out to you yeah so i'm on twitter at greg mcpherson um and uh find me on linkedin just start uh, dial up greg mcpherson and srw you'll you'll dig me up um and but yeah harnessing the nine hallmarks of aging.com and www.srw.co and it's is for science r for research and w for wellness and just Great. yeah thank you for the conversation and just wish everybody a uh, just a long healthy thriving life because that's what we're all about absolutely and i'm working on an anti-aging conference for next year and i'm trying to convince greg to turn up and lecture on there so <laughs> I'm there, Lisa. We're absolutely there. I'm just publicly out. Did you see I have to come down? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Greg. Thank you very much, Lisa. Bye for now.